got a powerful enemy there, gentlemen. That Barnes is real gung-ho on this case. I knew it. I knew it. That man just won't quit. An old derelict's body is found on South Fork, and he's gonna make it look like the biggest case since Bonnie and Clyde. Who was it they found, Sheriff? Do you know? His name is Hutch McKinney. Do you remember him? Yeah, he worked for me. Well, I won't bother you anymore now. I just thought y'all ought to know about it. Thank you, Edwin. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ray. Uh, what's up, Ray? You know that investigator from the DA's office has been going over my land with a metal detector? Yeah, what about him? Well, he just found a real old 38 caliber service revolver. It's very not 20 yards from where he found a body. Did you get a good look at it? Yeah. Investigator said it was an 1892 Colt six shot service revolver. Double action. Well. I, uh, I think maybe you boys better see if you can call in a few markers and get Cliff Barnes off this investigation. Because if Ray's right, it was my gun, all right. Donahue, there must be a dozen guys in the DA's office who can handle this. Yeah, well, the way Barnes feels about my family, he's gonna build this up into some kind of cockamamie case that'll cost the county a fortune. All right. All right, bud, do whatever you can. I appreciate it. All right, bye. Well, I just talked to Curly Hobson. Yeah, anything? He said he'd do what he can, but it's hard to fool around with the DA's office. I got Donahue talking to the DA himself. He owes me a few favors. Well, you gotta keep the pressure on. Who's left on your list? Here, take that bottom part, would you? Sure. Right there, take those guys, and I'll handle the rest. <clears throat> that thing's spooky. Can't you throw something over it? Looks like old Hutch is coming right out of the desk. I can if it bothers you. No, that's all right. I'm getting used to it. Come in. Sheriff Washburn, glad you could be here. Who's this? It's Murdo Ferris. This is Investigator Tiny Voigt. Hello, sir. Tiny. Tiny hadn't had these pictures for more than an hour when he ran into Mr. Ferris here at the Wild Bronx Saloon. Should I tell him, Mr. Barnes? Please do. Well, I was in that bar at Braddock when Hutch McKinney and Jock Ewing almost tore the place apart. When was this, Ferris? Oh, I'd say near as I can remember, 27, 28 years ago. Which was it, 27 or 28 years? Oh, come on, Sheriff. No, no. It was 1952. Eisenhower just beat the pants off of that Stevenson guy. It was a couple weeks after the election. <laughs> Some of us were still celebrating. Tell him about Hutch. Uh, Hutch, he was a foreman on the South Fork. He was until that night, anyway. Right there in the bar, Jock fired him. He ordered him to leave the ranch by morning, or he was going to kill him. Hello, Sheriff. I've seen a lot of you lately. Yes, sir, I guess you have. Good news, the Club 30 Well, what can I do for you this time? It ain't a pleasant beauty, sir. You got a job to do. You do it. I'm sorry, Jock. I got to read you your rights. What the hell are you talking about, Fenton? I have to arrest you in connection with the murder of one Hutchinson McKinney. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak with an attorney and to have that attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. To be continued. Hello? Mama, Daddy's been arrested. No. Yes, I'll pick you up and take you to the courthouse. Harv Smithfield's going to arrange bail. But why was he arrested? What's the charge? Murder. I've got some good news. I had Jock Ewing arrested. Jock arrested? Why? For murder. 
Murder? Have you lost your mind? It's true. You're using the DA's office to frame him? You just don't stop, do you? Daddy, I'm sorry. I've got to go home. I finally got Jock Ewing for you. Hey, Cliff. I sure could use a little drink. A murder charge. It's inconceivable. It's something Cliff Barnes pulled out of thin air to make trouble. Nobody's gonna convict Daddy. What kind of evidence do they have to make an arrest? Jeff Barnes can't have that kind of power. He must have convinced someone higher up. Well, we won't know anything until Scotty Demarest gets here anyway. Well, if you need Scotty Demarest to defend you, I'm worried. He's the best, Mama. We can afford the best. That's why we got him, Mama. Pam. I'm so sorry, Jock. Well, you can be proud of your brother today. Shut up, JR. Digger's so sick. What's wrong with Cliff? What can he be thinking? I don't know, but I intend to find out. Honey, I'm sorry about Digger, but right now I'm more concerned with what Cliff is doing to my daddy. Bobby, I can't stand it if you and Cliff are at each other's throat. I don't want you to interfere. 